I'm Dr. Kapil Chaturvedi, and in this lecture, we will discuss evolution of software modules and software economics under lecture two, module one. So, uh, let's start. So, uh, as we discussed in the last video, the software development life cycle, where we follow the various phases of SDLC to complete a software project. So here we are revising that mechanism by uh, using that uh, uh, diagram. Because SDLC is the base of software development, like software development, any kind of software development, and different kind of software use different kind of modules, to develop, models to develop or different kind of softwares. So here we are taking one uh, diagram in which uh, uh, we can see that uh, first of all, we'll have to perform the requirement analysis. So requirement analysis is the phase where we make a conception of the project. Thereafter, we make a design of blueprint of the that project. And on the basis of the design, the implementation phase will go on, uh, where uh, a software will be implemented in different uh, programming language, language like C, C++. Uh, Java, Cobol, uh, Java, PHP, C Sharp, any kind of language can developer use to develop that project. And uh, once that project is complete, testing phase will be start to check uh, either the project is completely uh, properly complete or not, properly implemented or not. Uh, and uh, by testing that project, uh, that project will be deployed on the client side and continuously evolution will go on and required changes will be made if required. So uh, as we discuss, there are different kind of models will be used to, to uh, based on the SDLC to develop a software. Here system development life cycle uh, space uh, can be represented in also that form like requirement, design, implementation, verification and maintenance. So there are several ways to represent the SDLC phases. What our motive is to understand different models. So our very first model is waterfall, a waterfall model, which is based on SDLC. Any kind of software development, like uh, uh, any kind of software development uh, uh, model will be based on SDLC. But that might be possible. The name uh, might be something, some change, and. Uh, and my model can use that steps in their own way. So here waterfall model says that uh, we'll have to complete the requirement analysis, then we will have to go on the design, then we'll have to go on implementation, then testing, then de development and maintenance. So here the name is waterfall. Waterfall it means, uh, the meaning of waterfall it means something which has come from top to bottom. And once uh, uh, the thing is, come on the bottom cannot go back on top. So in, we, we talk about, about waterfall. In waterfall, once water can uh, come down, can not go, uh, can, cannot go uh, back to top side. So here that, that uh, model also follow that mechanism where once, uh, first of all, we'll have to complete analysis phase, then we will have to go on the design phase. Without completing design phase, we will never go on implementation phase. And once we come on the implementation phase, we will not go back on design phase. So that diagram or that model says that we'll have to complete our each and every step, and then we'll have, go, uh, we'll have to go on the next phase. So this is waterfall model. Second model is incremental model which says that uh, we can develop a project parallelly in different increments and each increment follow the same SDLC steps like analysis, design code and testing in increment one and same steps will follow in increment two and same in, uh, process will uh, follow in increment three. So uh, here we can say that increment one, two, three, we are saying that that model is incremental model, it means in each and every increment we follow the same steps. 
Another and important model is spiral model, which follow the HDLC stars work in their own way, like uh, determine objectives, identify and resolve risk, development and test, planning the next iteration, and inside the update that follows some steps, requirement and plan. Here, yeah, follow requirement and plan. Then, by completing requirement and plan, that will go on the verification step, verification and validation. Then go on the development step. Then prototype two verification and validation. Again, then test plan. Then by completing test plan, uh, it, it follow it follow the operational prototype. Detailed design, code, integration, test, implementation, and release. So uh, you will see that spiral model. My focus on that spiral. You will see that that work on the project parallelly, and it focus on uh, two way phases. You will see that it will follow determine an objective phase in. Uh, in the very first phase, determine an objective that will follow the, these all phases. Again, in second phase, second step, identity, identify and resolve risk that will again follow these steps. And development and test is this will follow these steps again. Here, by following that step, also that follow the step detailed design, code integration, test and implementation. By where detailed design it means making the blueprint like DFD, ERs, and GAN chart, different different kind of charts. Or designing code, it means actual implementation in programming language. Integration, it means integrate the different modules which is assigned to different team members. And test, it means testing of logics testing of code and testing of whole project either that project is complete uh, properly implemented or not and the final implementation it means uh, by integrating different modules on a same place making a one copy of project and then release phase it means deployment of that project on the client side so uh, this is the spiral model. Another model is component-based software model, which explains a very important thing, which is reusability. So, in today's era, many of the logics which we have to implement is already implement or implemented by another developers. So we can use that same code from the library instead of implementing that code newly. So that uh, uh, component-based software development model explains or says a thing, which is, we know very well that what is planning, risk analysis, customer communication, we know very well that that things, but the thing which we have to understand in this model is component based uh, mechanism where in the engineering and construction release engineering construction and release this is the phase where actual project is implementing so what we have to do whenever we implement a new module first of all we will have to identify that candidate component what new co component which we ha have to implement what new uh, component have to be implement then we will have to look up that component in the library. We'll have to find out that component in library. If that component is available, uh, available in our library, then we'll have to extend, extract that component. We'll have to extract that component, build component if unavailable. If available, then extract and build if not available. Now, if we are making some changes, then adjust uh, existing module then we'll have to add this and if we are uh, adding uh, if we, we, we already found a product in the library if we are uh, already available that project in the library then uh, we'll make the appropriate changes and if we don't have that uh, find that uh, product in the library then we'll make that project newly a uh, product newly and we'll add in the library 
and uh, here we are updating the library and by updating the library we add that newly constructed constructed module in our project okay so simply uh, this is nothing this is uh, this uh, model says the uh, the mechanism of reusability, the concept of reusability, where we'll have to check that either the module which we have to newly newly construct is already available in the library. If available, then we will have to use by making the changes. And if we don't have in library, then we'll have to make newly the newly uh, construct that product. And in both of the cases, either that product is found or not, we'll have to add that newly constructed product to the library because if we have to, if we found the product in library, we'll make a, a appropriate change it. So it will be a new product. So we'll add that product in the library and we'll add finally in our project. So this is component-based software development model. Now, uh, the next thing is evolution of software economics. In this phase, evolution of software economics, it means uh, we are talking here about the cost estimation and the efforts estimation of the project, what kind of efforts are applied on the project so that we can calculate what is the cost of that project. So in this phase, we'll have to focus on these things, size, process, personal environment, and quality. So that theory says that software economics is basically situated uh, at inter inter interaction, uh, intersection of information economics and even software design and engineering. Most of software cost models are generally abstracted into function of five basic parameters. These parameters are given below as we, as we told you. Size, process, personal, environment and quality. Between these parameters, the relationship and estimated cost can be written in following way. So how we calculate the efforts numerically? of a project. So by, by applying that formula, we'll have personal, environment, quality, and size. And also the process will put, put these values in that formula and by making multiplication, we can calculate the numerical effort of the project. Now, the, under the evolution of software economics, software economics is the study of how a scarce project resource are allocated for. Project. So we'll have to focus these things. Software economics helps software managers allocate those resources in the most efficient manner. Well understood thing is that we are uh, uh, talking about the management of the project. It means we'll have to uh, allocate the resources in well mannered form. So we'll have to uh, find out the economics. Uh, the process of accounting function points, gathering data, analyzing data is commonly referred to as software matrix, but in reality is a branch of economic which should be called software economics. So this is the point which we have to keep in mind during software uh, economics evaluation. Now, uh, this is the diagram which explains you uh, during the software economics, what kind of things which we have to focus, organizational behavior, psychology, psychology, psychology means psychology of customer, uh, social psychology, psychology, economics, software development, and aesthetics. So this is the things, these are the things which we have to focus during the completion of software economics. Now, uh, evolution of software economics, many of in the field of software development limit their understanding of the field to only these technical aspects. First, software economics. So uh, here we are discussing about these things. Software economics means examines the entire idea of software development and it includes many different disciplines. And psychology focuses on the study of behavior and the reward punishment model. What gets reward get done? Social psychology is focused on how people behave in an organization, quality of work, life, and fear pressures. Organizational behavior, it means, is the process of analyzing the structure of an organization to understand those structural issues impacting organizational productivity and quality. Economics, the study of price, cost, and security. Statics deals with quantitative and qualitative techniques for the collection of data, how data is analyzed, and how results are 
presented. So uh, these are the aspects which we have to focus during the software economics calculation. So uh, this is our second lecture. We'll continue these things in the third lecture and go on the next topic. Thank you.